Welcome everyone to the Cooper Landing Fishing Guide uh, home version, I guess. Uh, I know it's been a while since I put out a video. Uh, you know, just kind of wanted to uh, address that a little bit. You know, got a lot of stuff going on with the coronavirus, got some stuff happening with, you know, like our guide season last year with the fire, the Swan Lake fire here in Cooper Landing. And then of course, you know, this year coming into the season with the coronavirus, just been kind of hard to, to get out and get the energy to make some videos, but I uh, got some downtime and thought I'd get some stuff out to you guys uh, as soon as I had a little bit of time. For this series of videos, I thought I would kind of take Tim Rollins' lead, uh, AKA Line Speed Jedi, do a little Q&A session, uh, get lots of questions, you know, you know, throughout the, you know, guiding season, but then also through emails, YouTube comments, Facebook comments, things like that. Uh, my specialty is basically working with folks that have never spay cast before, so I wanted to, uh, you know, kind of address some of those questions some of those folks might have and then get into more uh, intermediate and then advanced questions as we go, go along here. Our, uh, our first question comes from Tom from Boca Raton, Florida. And Tom asks, uh, how, uh, well, how the coronavirus has affected your guide business? And uh, Tom, that's a great question. Um, you know, at, at the first start of it, um, you know, we had a few cancellations and, uh, you know, we were kind of unsure with, with how things were gonna unfold. Um, as it's gone on, you know, the cancellations really started to mount up and it really got us kind of scared you know, as far as like our, our future for this season, but then, you know, not only this season, but then going into, you know, next season and, and seasons beyond. This year we hired a new guide, Mike Fisher. Uh, we bought a new boat and last year we bought a new uh, power drifter, a jet boat. And, uh, you know, with the fire last year, um, kind of closing the last half of our season and with the coronavirus kind of closing the, at least for the foreseeable future, the first half of this season, um, it's been tough. You know, you've, we've really had to you know, buckle down financially and really try to, you know, strategize how we're going to make sure we pay everyone back their, their deposits. You know, we probably paid back $25,000 plus in deposits. In addition to that, um, probably lost another twenty-five dollars to, to $30,000 in new business that would be booking um, for the, at least the first half of the season. Um, so, you know, it's been tough, but uh, at the same time, we're looking forward to, um, still looking forward to the season, looking forward to, um, you know, people, if they can make it to us, being able to, uh, you know, have a safe, fun fishing experience out there. Fishing for us um, in the guiding industry has actually been deemed a, an essential service, which um, which is kind of like, you know, there's definitely some pros and cons to that. We're allowed to fish, um, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we're keeping our, our patrons, our, uh, our good, good folks that fish with us safe and healthy and, uh, you know, give them the peace of mind when they're fishing with us that they'll be safe. So we've been really weighing that kind of stuff. Um, overall, I think it's really, you know, given us a, you know, a hard look at the business, the business model, you know, a hard look at like how we're going to approach the future and plan for the future. Um, but honestly, it's done nothing but, but good things for our business. We've learned a lot about how we do business. We learned a lot about um, our customers and we've learned a lot about, uh, you know, how we're going to go forward. So uh, we're looking to come out of it. Um, I wouldn't say ahead, but we're looking to come out of it much stronger than we went into it. Thanks for that message. Uh, thanks for that uh, question, Tom. Uh, Andy, he's from uh, King of Prussia in Pennsylvania, says, I love your content, and uh, what is the easiest and cheapest way to get into spay casting? And what I would tell you, Andy, is that the gear you have right now will, will help you kind of uh, learn a little bit about spay casting. So if you have a regular, you know, common, like nine foot five weight single hand rod or any kind of single hand rod with any kind of fly line, you can begin to practice some of your spay casting. Uh, a couple casts that I would probably try would be like a double spay, um, you know, single spay you could try, but double spay really helps because you get a little bit of water load. Um, but yeah, you can basically use your normal setup and uh, just practice some of the casts that you've seen on TV, or I'm sorry, on YouTube and, and videos and things to familiarize yourself with the technique. You don't need to spend any money on any special lines or any other different equipment. Uh, a, a normal weight forward line uh, with a with a lighter setup, you know, as far as you don't necessarily need a sink tip, you don't need um, big heavy flies, you don't want big heavy flies and things like that to start off. Um, but as you find yourself getting comfortable with those casts and kind of getting familiar with the, the, the moves, you're going to find you're going to want a little bit more aggressive shooting head style system. Um, you could you could graduate into you know some of the the um, oh, like scientific angler lines, the OPST lines, um, even experiment with like some just short short lines for your single hand rod 
and uh, kind of go from there. If you're looking to swing bigger flies or you know get deep, things like that, you're gonna definitely wanna lean more towards like the OPST lines, a Skagit setup, um, so you can kind of get a, put a sink tip on there and get down. But lighter setups like Scandinavian setups and things like that, you can get away with you know, fishing lighter things like nymphs and, and uh, wet flies and things like that. So definitely give your single hand rod a try and see how it goes for you. Uh, thanks for that, Andy. Uh, Mark, he's from Warren, Michigan. Um, he asks, how do you come up with your trout fly patterns? Um, basically, all the flies that I tie and most guides like to tie are what we would consider guide style flies, where we basically want to be able to tie flies really fast because we know we'll probably lose them, damage them, um, and things like that. So we want to make sure we, we you know, don't overcomplicate them you know, with a bunch of steps and you know, it takes us 15 minutes to tie a fly that will take us two minutes to lose. So, so first and foremost, we wanna make sure we're tying things that are effective that catch fish, but then also you know, if we lose them, we're not gonna cry about it. Then we can tie multiples of them in, in a quick period of time. The second thing I'll say for, for what I would consider my trout space style flies or my you know, Skagit type style flies or even Scandi type flies, um, some of the larger patterns we use, uh, my biggest thing there was making sure that they were castable, using the least amount of materials I can to give the biggest profile um, and the least amount of weight I can in order to make sure they can cast effectively with even some of the lighter um, Skagit and even Scandinavian setups. Um, so that's kind of my, my goals when going into that, and I uh, hope that answers your questions. And a lot of the flies that I tie are based on, you know, other patterns, um, you know, steelhead patterns and things like that, intruders and all that, but just kind of scaled down for trout. Um, one of the cool things about tying flies is that you, once you learn how to use certain materials, like once you learn how to wrap marabou or wrap different um, hackles for collars or, thing, or palmer hackles, all that kind of stuff, once you learn how to each, use each kind of material, then you can start to um, really start to experiment with kind of bringing those flies that you see in your head to the vise and then out to the water. And that's kind of what I like to do. I don't really have a specific goal when I'm actually designing flies as far as, uh, you know, I don't really have a formula, it's more so just to try to make them easy to cast, easy to tie, quick to tie, and that will catch fish. Uh, thank you for that one, Mark. And our last question today comes from Mike. He's from Rochester, New York, right uh, you know, about 100 miles north of my hometown of Corning, New York. So, hi, Mike. Uh, good to hear from Rochester, New York. Uh, he says, I love your short film on Trout Spay. Um, any thoughts on how to get into making short films? So that's a great question, um, especially you know as we you know, kind of grow through fly fishing and, and, and grow through our experience in this, in this uh, sport is that we, we want to find other ways to kind of express our, you know, love for the sport and our, or maybe our different talents. And um, I would say that the biggest thing is, is that there's lots of courses out there online. There's lots of free YouTube videos to watch as far as like, you know, like what cameras to use, how to make, you know, take like cinematic um, shots and things like that. I'm by no means an expert in that area at all. Um, I'm completely self-taught. All the films and things that, that I do, um, I use a very minimal equipment. I'll use my camera, my DSL, DSLR like I've got set up here with a, like a wireless lav mic like I have here. <clears throat> and then I'll use my GoPro and now I have a DJI Osmo Action and then my DJI drone. And I basically set up you know, my camera on a tripod at various angles trying to capture myself, you know, whether it's you know, talking head fishing, you know, talks as far as like casting and things like that or I'll have you know, some over the shoulder shots or down, down the line shots. Um, so just kind of what I, what I like to do is take what I have in my head as far as how I want things to look and then try to replicate that with my camera setup and things like that. Um, but I think a really big part of um, kind of putting it all together is learning how to edit. Um, and I'm, you know, of course with like filmmaking and things like that, I'm very, very, very new to it, very green at it. I have a lot to learn. Um, but I think the, the biggest thing that separates people who make you know, kind of decent YouTube videos to ones that make, you know, better video, uh, YouTube videos and things like that is their cinematic presentation that they, that they put out um, through their video editing. editing. And I think that editing um, is probably the most tedious and time consuming portion of making a video, but uh, it will be the best way to, to, uh, to kind of portray to the world your kind of artistic rendering of you know, what you're trying to portray. So if you have something in mind as far as like, you know, you want, you want to, you know, show the audience, you know, someone like swinging a fly down river, then you want an overhead shot, and then you want a shot looking up, you know, right up at the angler, then one looking kind of from below and up, you have to really get your cameras set up for all that. 
but then you have to like cinematically be able to tie that all into a, a sequence of shots um, and then of course combine that with music. Um, once you get a little better at editing and taking particular shots, what you really want to make sure you do is pick a song way before you put out your, you know, your, or start to edit your video and you can actually get a, get songs, you can get them, you know, free through YouTube, but also there's some, some uh, subscription sources like Musicbed and, and uh, things like that where you can actually, you know, pick a song that, you know, gives you that mood, that feeling that you're trying to portray in that, in that short film or your, your YouTube video or whatever. Um, then you can kind of tailor your clips and your editing to that, which kind of will, you know, use the emotions of the song to bring in the artistic um, kind of visual components of your video to, to kind of marry with that song. Um, other than that, you know, the more videos I make, the better I get at doing it and the more ideas I get and the, and the better I get at filming. Um, so I think a big part of it is to just continually make things and uh, don't be afraid to put it out to the world and don't be afraid to, uh, you know, just keep making things and don't let anyone kind of tell you that you're video sucks and you should stop. Nothing should stop you from, from continuing to create and uh, share with the world your love and passion for the sport. So uh, I hope that helps, help, uh, helps out Mike and I hope you're staying uh, safe and healthy up in Rochester and getting out on some of those rivers. Um, well, with that, uh, that kind of com completes our, our kind of ask, ask a guide, uh, you know, kind of a YouTube video here. Uh, I want to thank you guys again for joining me. I definitely want to encourage you guys to subscribe and like this video. Comment below, ask questions. Um, we're all in this together as far as like learning the sport. Um, you know, you're never good, too good to like keep learning. So I, I'm definitely one of those that wants to keep learning and sharing and, uh, you know, sharing ideas and things like that with each other. So, uh, so keep that conversation going. Um, definitely look out for more videos coming up. I'm going to be doing some more of these talking head type things with, uh, you know, Q&A and uh, more stuff on the water, you know, since I'm not going to be on the water a ton this year, you know, which is what it's looking like, I'm probably going to do some videos on king salmon on a two-handed rod, um, even trout, even more trout stuff during the heart of the summer and, and different just uh, stuff about the river in our area, you know, to kind of share with folks. But uh, yeah, so just keep, keep watching and supporting. And uh, thanks so much for your time, guys. I appreciate it.